Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue our journey into the evolution of industry. Uh, this time, we're going to see how an industry giant is leveraging the LaVue Rio architecture to build the factory of the future. So, here to tell us how Airbus are embracing smart machines and the Internet of Things to revolutionize their manufacturing processes, I'm pleased to welcome to stage Joel Thomas. So, Joel, Airbus have a vision for boosting their manufacturing productivity that they call the factory of the future. Can you tell us a bit about it, please? Sure, Rich. So, the factory of the future is a project that aims to employ emerging computing and communications technologies in order to build aircraft faster, more flexibly, and with a higher build quality. Let's have a look at a video to help explain that vision. The factory of the future is... Excuse me, sorry. The aerospace industry has some of the most demanding manufacturing requirements in the world. Production involves the assembly of large heavy equipment, the fabrication of complex electronic components, and the precise mechanical alignment of parts. And because millions of people trust Airbus every day to transport them around the world, quality assurance with traceability is key. I mean, this, this project, no question about it, it's inspired, but it also looks damn complex. So, Joel, how on earth are Airbus hoping to achieve this vision? Well, Airbus believes that data analytics and cyber-physical systems will play a key role in making this vision a reality. So they devised a platform-based approach that they could apply across various different areas. Now, Airbus is a company that has various different programming languages to use on different platforms. They have their smart production tools, communication systems, and wearable intelligence devices, not to mention their advanced robotics and mobility platforms. Now, initially, they attempted to solve each of their problems in isolation. One team would look at the next generation of smart production tools, whilst another would look at more efficient ways of entering electronic records. But they quickly found that inter-system communication and code reuse was too difficult and too time-consuming for a small team of engineers. So they chose a platform-based approach and created a software framework that they could apply across a common set of hardware targets. This allowed them to better invest their engineering time by focusing on core algorithms in areas such as vision, motion planning, and filter design. Oh, sounds good, but even better, I believe you set up an, an example. So, yeah. Joel, can we some, see some of this progress? Yeah, sure. So here we have an example of one of their wearable intelligence devices called the smart glasses. So if you would please put these on, Rich. Yeah, sure. I don't know if I particularly suit glasses, but I don't know. Fair play, they're pretty comfortable. Yeah. Okay, so shortly, Rich, the audience will be able to see the world through your eyes. So for the sake of your dignity, be careful what you get up to. <laughs> okay, thanks for the FYI, Joel. Duly noted. Well, ladies and gents, in which case, if you're able to see yourself on screen, could I, get a, could I ask you to give us a big wave? Can you do that for us? Don't be shy, we're all friends here. Ah, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I don't know if you realised it, but just then, you made an ageing Glastonbury veteran feel like a rock star himself, so I do appreciate that. <coughs> now, I'm having some fun with these glasses on stage, but Joel, over at Airbus, these are far from a gimmick, right? That's right, Rich. So imagine this now. You're a shop floor technician working on the fuselage of an aircraft like the A330 and their manufacturing sensor. On a typical aircraft, there are hundreds of thousands of <coughs> locations that need to be located, drilled, measured, tightened, and inspected. Now, we wanted to bring the fuselage of an aircraft into the conference center today, but it proved logistically difficult. So instead, what we have is a video of the smart glasses in action. Let's have a look now. So here we can see an engineer working their way through a typical aircraft panel. Now, with the smart glasses on, the system takes in the vision of what the engineer is seeing and also identifies the QR codes that you can see on the production tool. And also, on top of that, the actual distinguishing features on the bolts and the general panel. And from that information, it can identify what task the engineer is looking to complete. This was done by using their existing algorithms that Airbus already have, and also their open CV algorithms from another company. Awesome. So you've explained this standardized platform approach, but how does any of this actually boost manufacturing efficiency? 
Well, on the production floor today, you'd be using one of over a thousand different tools in order to get the job done. But now, because of this tight interplay between wearable intelligence devices and smart production tools, the technician simply has to place the tool in the correct location, and the system will identify what particular job it is that they're looking to complete, apply the correct amount of torque, and not only that, it will log the entire process to a quality assurance database. Wow. Wow, we. Well, at this point, the good folk of the audience are probably wondering how Airbus are leveraging the Lavi Rio architecture, since pretty clearly I'm not wearing a compact Rio. Well, a few months ago, Rich, you would have been wearing one because they began their development on the compact Rio. But when Airbus came to NI and told us about their plans for wearable intelligence, we agreed that their application was a good fit for the new NI system on module. Now, the system on module is our smallest ever implementation of the Lavi Rio architecture. As you can see here, it's the same size as a credit card, which makes it ideal for low physical footprint applications and high volume deployments. The LabV Rio architecture has a key advantage, which is that no matter what form factor you're on, you can use the same software and the same IP, which is exactly what Airbus has done to minimize that change over time to the SOM platform. Sounds good. Well, Joe, I guess it's time to stop teasing us. Can we please see the SOM in action? Yeah, sure, Rich. So, as I've said, we neither have the plane nor the tools with us today, but what we can do is take the video that we saw before, feed that directly into the SOM, where it'll carry out the onboard image processing, and then rather than sending commands to the tools, which would be dangerous, we have to send those commands to a small interface over here. So, Rich, if you would have a look at this display yeah. here. Yeah, of course. We'll get the demonstration running. Sure, okay. Well, just to recap, then, we can see quite clearly um, that the, yeah, the SOM is literally smaller than my own IET membership card, as you can see there. But this is doing the processing on that pre-recorded video feed. And then here is sending the commands to this uh, amulet display up here. And we can see that as the operator completes a task, they are indeed being ticked off this task list here. Now, of course, over at Airbus, the, this data would have been communicated to the smart tools, to the operator, and as Joel said, to the quality assurance database. I mean, this is incredible. This is what the factory of the future should be. Now, Joel, obviously I'm very impressed around their plans for smart tools, but I'm equally impressed with their plans around industrial robots. So can you tell us a bit about those? Please? Yeah, of course. So Airbus have a plan called the Open Robot Interface. Now, in their manufacturing operations, they utilize robots from companies like ABB, KUKA, and Fanuc. They want to be able to integrate these robots with their new smart production tools technology. And in order to do this, they will have to scale their robotics application software across all their systems. Operationally, they're going to do this by using the Compact Rio to supplement their existing industrial controllers. In addition to this, they're leveraging code from the Linux community the software and robot developers themselves, and their other Factory of the Future designs. The Factory of the Future is a huge, ambitious vision, but the team is now making rapid progress. Ever since they adopted a platform-based approach using the LabVIEW Rio architecture, the team is simply more productive. Compared to the other approaches that they tried, they are seeing a 10x reduction in development time. Mind blown. We're so excited to see Airbus's progress. So, Joel, thank you very much for sharing it with us today. Thank Thanks, you, Rich. Mate. Cheers. Man. <laughs> right. Well, I can probably ditch the glasses now anyway. So, uh, ladies and gents, over the past 45 minutes or so, we've seen some incredible applications from both budding and professional engineers alike, each of which was empowered by graphical system design. Let there be no doubt, pairing the right developers with the right platform is going to ensure a bright future of innovation and discovery for us all. Right, it, it is that time again. Time for you guys to divide and conquer. Please enjoy the rest of your NI days, and thank you once again. Thank you.